ஜனாஞ்சனாஷலாக்கிரிபாசிந்துவிட்டிவோட்டி uh the wonderful devotees uh, and 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 this is my second uh, uh, opportunity to be with all of you so when we talk about determination that's the determination that all of you have uh, you know rain or shine or snow or ice uh, you are all uh, meeting and covid could not uh, uh, stop uh, your association so you're continuing your virtual association week after week that is determination and that's one of the important um, you know uh, foundational aspect of uh, krishna consciousness which all of you have and i would like to take a drop of what you have so that uh, i can imbibe that uh, consciousness of determination that all of you have so i would like to thank uh, 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 mother mokshila and uh, nimayanita prabhu for giving me this opportunity and also to all the devotees uh, who are part and parcel of this bhakti priksha on a weekly basis for uh, taking part in today's uh, program hare krishna so today's topic uh, uh, is uh, the, uh, you know we'll cover the nine stages of bhakti yoga and uh, for those of you who know me i like to uh, include uh, uh, or or have the class in a powerpoint presentation as you know it takes um you know probably 10x time to um you know prepare for a for a class through a powerpoint presentation than just speaking because speaking is easy but i always think that uh, there is more value when uh, when when we use more than one sense because when we are hearing somebody we are just using our ears right even though our eyes are fixed to that one particular person uh, pretty much you are not using it you are only consciously following the content through the years uh but uh, when we have some sort of uh, audio uh, visual presentation then more of our senses are being used and uh, more of the senses get uh, purified as well. so i hope uh, all of you are uh, okay with that uh, and uh, hopefully you'll find some benefit uh, from this audio uh, visual presentation and i'm not i don't remember whether we did a powerpoint last time as well but uh, you know you hopefully you will be able to retain more of what you uh, read and here so what i would like to do because we are talking about the nine stages of bhakti and uh, this is something that chaitanya mahaprabhu initially um, taught to uh, sanatan goswami and then later on uh, rupa goswami is giving to us through this uh, you know um, bhakti rasamrita sindhu to all of us so it's nicely intertwined in chaitanya charitamrita and this particular verse so we always start off by glorifying uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu because and 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 of course nityananda prabhu uh, advaita acharya and all the acharyas in our brahma madhva gaudi vaishnava sampradaya this is uh, you know i used to be a sportsman many many years ago and uh, i like numbers and uh, this is one of those verses that uh, comes in chaitanya charitamrita over 40 times exact same verse okay so there are a total of 11155 verses and you'll see that i put a nice slide for all of you and feel free to take a picture of the slide uh, that you feel inspired uh, this will help you so in this case uh, this exact verse is repeated 40 times or more actually maybe 42 times in chaitanya charitamrita and you can add at least another 10 to 15 times when there is a slight variation uh, in the same the same meaning is the same instead of chaitanya mahaprabhu uh, uh, you know gauranga word is used uh, uh, in chaitanya charitamrita and uh, that you can add another 10 to 15 times so this the crux of this uh verse remains the same in about 55 uh times in uh, chaitanya charitamrita but definitely word by word exactly 40 to 42 times uh this wonderful verse is there it usually is in the when it open many of the chapters it's in the second verse of each one of those chapters uh so we will uh, yeah, we will uh, um, you know chant this very powerful mantra before we get started jaya jaya shri chaitanya jaya nityananda ஜய ஜய சந்திரஜயிருந்தித்தியானந்த ஜய சந்திரஜய கௌரபக்தவிருந்தித்தியானந்த ஜய சந்திரஜய கௌரபக்தவிருந்த 
So the translation is all glories to Lord, Nit Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, all glories to Lord Nityananda, all glories to Advaita Acharya and all glories to all the devotees of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So everybody is covered in this uh, wonderful small verse, but very powerful verse, which is repeated several times in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So just like we say, Vancha Kalpata Ribesha Kripa Sindhu Bevicha Paditanam. So in that, uh, we, are, we are offering our respects to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. So here, it's glorifying all the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as well. After glorifying Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu, Advaita Acharya. So we know Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, none other than Lord Krishna himself. Nityananda Prabhu is none other than Lord Balaram himself. And Advaita, uh, and Advaita Acharya is none other than a combined incarnation of anybody? Mahavishnu and Sadasiva. This is like a very, very powerful combination. Mahavishnu and Sadasiva. So, um, you know, the Vishnu Tattva of Lord Shiva is Sadasiva and uh, Advaita Acharya is a combined incarnation. And we know that Advaita Acharya is the one who worshipped um, the Lord, uh, worshipped Lord Krishna and wanted him to appear. And uh, he did so much of uh, chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra with uh, Ganges water and Tulasi. And then eventually uh, Lord Krishna came in this combined form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, who's a combined form of actually Krishna and Srimati Radharani. So as I said, uh, I like to do multimedia presentations because uh, we are able to uh, retain more of what we see and uh, hear, right? From the top to bottom, when we read, we are able to, um, you know, retain about 10%. When we hear, about 20%. When we see and uh, hear, then it's more. And 50% is what we see and what we hear. And once you take some notes as well, then 70% of what we uh, go through in any class or even in your classroom or at work, any seminar, we are able to uh, retain more. And 90% of what we do after we get trained or based on the contents, then we are able to retain 90% for a long period of time. So this is Edgar Co Dale's uh, cone of experience. So that's why, um, you know, we like to do, um, you know, multimedia presentations so that you're able to see and read and hear, etc. all together. Okay, because some of us are visual learners, some of us are, uh, you know, uh, auditory learners, some of us uh, like to read and write, and some of us are uh, kinesthetic by doing it, right, hands-on activity. So we'll try to capture as much as possible uh, today. Okay, so as we get to this nine stages of bhakti, um, you know, Chaitanya, this, this nine, these nine stages of bhakti is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Okay, so where does Chaitanya Charitamrita um, uh, uh, sort of stand when it comes to the three main scriptures in our ISKCON, which is Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charitamrita? So Bhagavad Gita, according to um, uh, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, who is the founder Acharya of ISKCON, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So um, as far as uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada is concerned, so Bhagavad Gita is the foundational study. And as we know, it, it contains 700 verses, part of Mahabharata. And these are the words of Krishna. And what it contains is the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. That's what is here in this Bhagavad Gita. And uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is the graduate study. And it has uh, 18,000 verses or 14,090 I think 14,096 or 14,094 slokas, right? When you go to Srimad Bhagavatam, when you count according to it, that's a long uh, story about that. But for all practical purposes, 18,000 verses are there. And uh, Srimad Bhagavatam um, uh, uh, describes the activities of Krishna mainly, but the content is not just the activities of Krishna, but also the character pastimes of the devotees as well, so of Krishna as well as of uh, Krishna's uh, devotees. But Chaitanya Charitamrita, from which uh, we will be, uh, you know, trying to understand these nine stages uh, of bhakti, this is said to be the postgraduate study, which contains, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, eleven thousand. 155 verses and uh, this is nothing but the mind of Krishna 
and the content of this is the process and practice of devotional service and that's the, one of the topics for today are the main topics for today stages of devotional service all that is contained in chaitanya charitamrita now there are many verses especially in the first uh, canto of shrimad bhagavatam that aligns with these nine stages of bhakti so it, it's all interconnected nicely but uh, the nine stages of devotional service is described in chaitanya charitamrita and of course it's expanded in bhakti rasamrita sindhu or nectar of devotion that you are all currently reading so uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu is the source of all the knowledge and uh, this is a very interesting uh, portrait uh, some of you may have seen it this is said to be the portrait of the original portrait of chaitanya mahaprabhu in puri supposedly done by one of the artists of king Uh, prataprutra king prataprutra is is a contemporary of chaitanya mahaprabhu if you remember and uh, if it, this is true it is as real as you can get without a photograph of chaitanya mahaprabhu so this was sent to me by uh, his grace dravid prabhu so that is actually chaitanya mahaprabhu he said that this is an artist who who actually did this in front of chaitanya mahaprabhu so Uh, you know, if anyone is interested, I can send it to you. And I uh, actually saw some something was on the web as well, right, uh, with the same information. So this is the original portrait of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki jai. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's, uh, um, you know, enacted his earthly pastimes uh, for forty-eight years only. Okay, from fourteen eighty-six to fifteen thirty-four, and the first twenty-four years he was an householder. You know, he was married, etc. Right. and then the second half of his life earthly life 24 to 48 years uh, it was sanyasi life because he got his um, sanyasi initiation when he was 24 years old in kathwa in mayapur so i was there uh, not for the initiation of course <laughs> this was uh, you know devotees go on pilgrimages uh, to mayapur so kathwa is one of the very uh, holy places uh, that you can all visit and i'm pretty sure some of you would have visited that uh, place as well so the first part of um, the second half of his years uh, he traveled and he preached uh, and and that's described in the madhya leela and the householder life uh, 0 to 24 years is described in adi leela of chaitanya charitamrita and the second part of his life which is uh, you know the 30 to 48 years he spent his time in jagannath puri and that was uh, that is described in antya leela and the first part of the last part of his life uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu associated with the devotee with with all the wonderful devotees who are going from mayapur if you remember uh, sivananda sen was taking all the dog and every all the other devotees for ratyatra etc and the last part of his life it was pretty much in gambira there is this place called gambira which is not far from uh, the jagannath puri temple and uh, you can all go there you can see chaitanya mahaprabhu's personal belongings there as well so he was in transcendental communication with lord krishna so when when he was preaching 24 years to 30 years he was uh, traveling and preaching um, in south india as well so last sunday we did a, a nice powerpoint presentation on chaitanya mahaprabhu's south india trip you know 4000 miles by walk and he spent two years uh, in south india A fabulous, fabulous uh, uh, description in the seventh, eighth, ninth uh, chapter of the Madhya Leela uh, 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 describes how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to different parts of South India. It was fascinating. So when we get an opportunity, we can do that uh, at some point. So I, I just wanted to provide you with some basic information before we get to the nine stages of bhakti. And as we get to the nine uh, stages of bhakti, this is, uh, you know, the, the, uh, this is referred to. in bhakti rasamrita sindhu from with next door nectar of devotion is derived and uh, this is the verse from the first chapter uh, sorry 1 4 15 and 16 and the same verse uh, or verses are repeated in chaitanya charitamrita madhya leela as well so i'm not sure uh, uh, nimainita prabhu and mother moksha leela prabhu so um, you know would would somebody like to read uh, um, the sanskrit uh, the transliteration and the translation so that we can get more devotees to be engaged or i can read the sanskrit and somebody can read the translation will that work yes uh, sanskrit okay. uh, this is transliteration would anybody like to read this yeah we can read yeah it, it, this is just a basic uh, anushtup meter right ato shraddha tato sadhu santo ta vajana yeah somebody anybody can read it Or do you, do you want to read together? Whatever mother you say, you know, I'm just at your service. 
Prabhuji. We can read together, Prabhuji. Okay, so we'll read it okay. slowly together. Yeah. One, two, three. Ado Shraddha Tata Sadhu Tango Tango Vajanak Kriya Tato Narta Tata Syad Tato Nishta Ruchistata Ruchistata Ata Shaktistato Mavastata Prema Bhutanchati Sadakana Mahayana Pradurva Vepa Vekrama Beautiful. So I think uh, some of you are uh, reading it very nicely. And, and then there's a delay in the audio, so kindly uh, bear with us on that. So all of you did a fantastic job. It's always good when we get an opportunity to read any of these uh, um, Sanskrit or, uh, you know, even the Bengali verses, right? Um, there is this unique mm -hmm. vibration in those mm -hmm. verses, right? So for those of you who are reading some of the Vedic verses, especially mm -hmm. from Rig Veda, it's a different world altogether, right? Like these are all sort of vibrations that are there. You're just mm -hmm. grabbing mm -hmm. that uh, um, uh, vibration back, okay? So maybe we can get uh, one of you to read uh, this translation. In the beginning, there must be faith. Then one becomes interested in associating with pure devotees. Thereafter, one is initiated by the spiritual master and executes the regulative principles under his orders. Thus, one is freed from all unwanted habits and becomes firmly fixed in devotional service. Thereafter, one develops taste and attachment. This is the way of sadhana bhakti, the execution of devotional service according to the regulative principles. Gradually, emotions intensify and finally, there is an awakening of love. This is the gradual development of love of Godhead for the devotional, for the devotee interested in Krishna consciousness. Beautiful. Thank you very much, Prabhu. So again, there's a lot of information packed into these two verses from the 23rd chapter of the Mati Lila. As I said, this is the instruction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sanatana Goswami and it's a series of instructions, right? Like it goes chapters after chapters. And similarly, there's the instruction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Rupa Goswami as well. And the instruction of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for all the uh, six Goswamis was, you know, go and, you know, open temples and, uh, you know, write books, right? And that's what they are done. So, um, you know, Again, um, I'm a numbers person at work as well as, um, you know, when I used to play sports. So for those of you who are interested, as I mentioned earlier, there are 11,155 verses in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, I just do this counting, you know, manually. You know, there are 17 chapters in Adi Leela. There are 25 chapters in Madhya Leela and there are 20 chapters in Antya Leela. And uh, we already saw the trans... Um, you know, uh, transportation of, of uh, the progress of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes from Adi Lila to Madhya Lila to Antya Lila. And this verse that uh, Prabhu just uh, read is from the 23rd chapter, which contains about 100, uh, which contains 127 uh, verses. So this is just to give you a uh, aerial view of uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, right? Adi Lila, Madhya Lila and uh, Antya Lila. And this Madhya Lila is the heavy duty uh, chapter, right? Because it contains, all, uh, you can say, more than half uh, of the content of the entire Chaitanya Charitamrita because over 6,000 verses out of 11,150 verses is from the Madhya Lila. Similarly, for those of you who are uh, very familiar with Srimad Bhagavatam, which chapter contains the more, which canto contains the most chapters? Anybody from the uh, uh, Srimad Bhagavatam? See chapter 10, sorry, Canto 10. Yes, very good. Canto 10 and Canto 10 has got 90 chapters, right? Uh, biggest uh, chapters and it's got over 3,900 verses, right? So you can say, um, you know, almost 28% uh, of the entire uh, 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 Srimad Bhagavatam is there in, in, in the 10th Canto. So similarly, it's it's lopsided in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila has got uh, most chapters and most number of verses as well. So this couple of slides ago when we read, this is a you know, powerful um, translation containing um, you know, uh, the essence of how to progress 
uh, in devotional service, the different stages of devotional service. But what I've done is I've just, uh, um, you know, put that in a nice pictorial format so that all of us can understand it much better. Okay. So here the journey from Shraddha to Prema, that means from this initial faith, faith that we may have up to this love of Godhead, this is what is stated in Chaitanya Charitamrita as well as in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So initially there needs that initial spark of faith, which is Shraddha, it's called faith in Krishna. And then the journey progresses to getting association of devotees, especially devotees who are more advanced than us, which is referred to as Sadhu Sangha. And then the regulative principles are established, you know, the 16 rounds and not eating meat and um, you know, uh, following the strict uh, rules and uh, regulations, that is what is referred to as bhajana kriya. And we'll go, you know, try to understand that each one of those uh, aspects or stages a little deeper. And from bhajana kriya, it goes to anartha nivriti. That means stopping all the unwanted things, you know, some of the bad habits that may be with us, that we may be continuing even from before joining ISKCON or before becoming Krishna consciousness as well. So those are some of those unwanted uh, um, habits or contamination that we may have. And those are gradually stopped. And then we are established. It's something is referred to as Nishta, which is firm faith. So there are two progress, right? So two progresses of faith. One is that initial faith in Krishna. And then later on in the fifth stage, firm faith is established. And then we start getting the actual taste for hearing and chanting. For those of you, yeah, so uh, hearing not just what we hear, but more importantly, topics about Krishna, like what we are doing today, right? Or the topics that will uh, enhance our taste in God consciousness or Krishna consciousness. So that is the taste for hearing and also taste for devotional service increases. And from there, we have much more deeper attachment, which is called as Ashakti. And from there, the penultimate state is called as Bhava. And it's also referred to as Preeti Ankura. And this is where the seed of love for Krishna is growing in our art. And the last stage is Prema. It is also referred to as Gada Bhava. And this is pure love for Krishna. So again, this is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught the Acharyas and uh, by the mercy of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, we get this knowledge. Otherwise, we won't even know that there are uh, these progressive journeys from this basic uh, faith that we may have in, oh, there is something called as ISKCON. Uh, they have some books too. Why don't I go there? You know, that's the initial, initial faith that somebody can have in these spiritual topics and then from there it progresses through the stages so we may not be there uh, you know towards the second half of it but all of us are there in many aspects at least to some degree okay. uh prabhuji can you just explain me the difference between uh shraddha faith and the uh, nishta firm faith yeah, just... we'll get to that. I have, uh, uh, you know, quite a few slides uh, to go through that and you will understand it. I can promise you, at least for this faith, you will, uh, it'll be very easy to understand. Uh, I've got quite a few slides that follow. Is that okay? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. How about this way? So faith in Krishna, then it progresses. When you have that little faith, then you go, somebody says, hey, I'll take you to the temple. I know somebody there, you know, it's a, it's a nice place. Uh, let's go to the temple. So we have the association of devotees. Then we start following the regulative principles. Then, um, you know, as we get the higher taste, uh, you know, as we say, you know, when we tasted lollipop when we were young and now gulab jhan tastes better. So the unwanted taste or lower taste goes away as we progress. Then we get into this firm faith. Then the taste for hearing and chanting takes place. Then there is deeper attachment to all aspects of Krishna consciousness, not just hearing and chanting, but doing arati and attending classes is more more personally uh, uh, attentive classes. And we're able to internalize those messages and actually uh, change our lives, right? And then finally, there is ecstatic emotional state. So maybe uh, uh, we may not be there in this ecstatic emotional state yet or pure love of Krishna there, but 
we may be in zones at different times you know sometimes when we're chanting you know we are in the zone when we are hearing something or when we are doing some arati or when you're taking part in yajna you may be in that zone you know for a short period of time but what is referred to here is pure love of krishna all the time right so it's a gradual transformation so here it's 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 a spiritual transition from the conditional state which is at the bottom faith in krishna to this ultimate state okay so this is the spiritual transition from uh you know from this conditional form of life to this ultimate state but what is important is the knowledge of the process right so today as 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 all of your uh, mother has chosen this topic and you're going through this the knowledge of the process itself from this ground zero on higher to the higher platforms of god consciousness this knowledge by itself helps us identify what are all the hindrances and dangers that obstruct our path of progress towards this ultimate stage again we may not be that beyond maybe two or three rungs of this ladder that keeps going up but at least we know what are all the obstacles right when you're driving when you see a big log of wood maybe you may want to go and lift it and put it there or you may have to take a detour a detour and go around that right so at least it gives us the knowledge of what are all the hindrances and dangers that that obstruct our path towards progress and when we know that there is a problem oh i have a lot of unwanted things i have this bad habit i have this anger uh, whatever the unwanted thing so when we recognize the symptoms of the disease then we can systematically cure the disease as well okay and although these levels are sort of separated right uh, as if they are independent for uh, independent of one another right but they are not independent uh, they are actually different intensities of the same that's what our acharya has explained they are all different intensities of the same thing the love of uh, krishna is expre expressed through devotional service so it's like dilute to strong okay everybody follows any any thoughts or questions on this because this is important so even though they seem to be independent from of one another they are not it's actually different intensities as we go up this transforms into this 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 without this you cannot go to this without this you cannot go to that right so even though they seem to be um, you know uh, sort of independent but it's also different di it's a, from dilute to being strong in each aspect So you mentioned here uh, after the firm faith, it is the taste for hearing. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, isn't that the hearing is the first step towards gaining the firm faith? Yeah. So uh, one is hearing, but um, you know this is the real taste for hearing, right? So there is a difference between hearing, you know, like we hear a movie song and when. we go uh, but then when we hear our teacher speak about an important aspect of what is going to come in the exam then we internalize that right so there is a difference in hearing uh, uh, aspect so uh, initial aspect so actually the taste for hearing hearing and chanting is fall is is in the third stage right following the regulative principles right so once we have the faith once we associate with devotees and then you know we get initiation maybe in the second stage and then we follow the regulative principle as you rightly said following the regulative principles is hearing chanting right so we've already done that we are doing that but then in the more advanced stage it's the actual stage yeah yeah i want to hear i want to i want to change myself after hearing the content it's not like going from one ear and coming out through the other ear follow that prabhu sometimes we have seen that at least in my case i can tell you that sometimes i get that intense desire of hearing and while other times i i just get so monotonous while hearing things yeah it's so, it's it's, it's the same for uh, it's the same for uh, uh, all the uh, every um, anyone who's in this material uh, uh, stage of life right because our attention span is less and then we have uh, as grahasthas uh, you know all of all of us have uh, uh, other pressing things that go on right there is problem at work there is problem in the family financial constraints uh, uh, disease you have to go to the hospital so there are many things conflicting priorities that come to us at different point in time right and that may be there even when you have the taste for hearing as well but what is referred to is the advanced stage of tasting uh, uh taste for hearing and chanting not 
that is there in the initial stages. Yeah, let me go and sit in the class. Okay, Prabhu, what did you understand from yesterday's class? Well, I don't, okay, what verse was this? Well, I don't remember. But then when we get into this actual taste for hearing and chanting, then uh, the entire content seemed to make sense to us and we are, we are internalizing the content more, way, way, way more than what we were internalizing the content uh, in the stage three, which was following the regulatory principles. Okay. Thank you. So the first stage, so I thought uh, Mother had asked about, um, you know, uh, the difference between faith and, uh, you know, a firm faith, right? So this is the, you know, starting stage, right? So, so this is faith in Krishna scriptures and prasadam. Pretty much it's like, yeah, I've heard about Krishna. Um, I've heard uh, that there are books uh, called as Bhagavad Gita, etc. And that they give free food in his con on Sundays. Uh, so prasadam is supposed to be very tasty. You know, that type of, um, you know, a little bit of faith, right? So this is the beginning of Krishna consciousness. And as they say, the journey of thousand miles begins with a single step, right? Okay, all right, let's go there and see. Okay, this Bhakti Bhiksha, let me join and see what happens, right? So this is this is the beginning stage, right? So that's, that's the flickering. It's, it's like a little a spark of fire is there. And then slowly when we fan it, it increases, increases, right? Just like, uh, you know, uh, Nimaini Thai Prabhu attends many of our yagyas, right? We do it in other cities and Sometimes I do it in other countries as well, right? That's how we start the Eggya, right? It's a little, little fire and then slowly it gets bigger and bigger, right? And we put wood and make it much, much bigger. But uh, we need this basic faith, which is the Shraddha. And uh, it is also, our Acharyas give this example, right? So the sugar cane is so dry, right? Uh, but there is so much of wonderful sweet juice that is, in, uh, that is, that is hidden inside the sugar cane, right? So we may be like, very strong. Oh, I don't believe in this and that. But still, there is this faith or the inclination to bhakti that is characteristic of each and every soul. So faith in Krishna, right? So let's, you know, at this point in time, whether we have it or we need to cultivate it, right? Yeah, why not? This this Krishna consciousness or Krishna has been, um, you know, it, it's, this tradition has been followed for thousands of years. And you know, millions of, uh, you know, devotees are there. Sorry, not millions of temples. It could be millions of temples in the whole universe or multiple universes. But there are so many temples and towering intellects follow this process. Right? So th all those, um, you know, it's, it's a subliminal persuasion for all of us, right? In this beginning stages, right? For us to get into it. And again, these are basic things that all of you who are in this Bhakti Vritsha program, you all of you are way, way beyond this, right? But I'm just saying how we came into Krishna consciousness. We had this basic faith. Okay, we know the scriptures. Uh, what our grand, But another thing is what our grandfathers and grandmothers uh, taught us is all from the scriptures, right? When they say, do not steal, do not lie, etc., etc. It's all, where is it coming from? They may not have told us this is from Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, first. This is uh, uh, Kapila Muni's, uh, uh, you know, Lord Kapila Dev's uh, teachings. No, they, they would have said, no, no, do, don't lie, don't steal, etc. But the contents are all coming from the scriptures, right? Faith in Prasadam, right? So it is said, Yajna Shista Sinas Santo Muchente Sarva Kilmishai, Bunchite Te Twagam Papa, E Pachanti Atma Karana. So here it is said, that the devotees of the Lord are released from all kinds of sin when you honor the prasadam. But if you cook for yourself, then you are verily eating sins, right? So these are all the faith, you know, it's growing. So it could be moving from this very, very basic thing to a little more advanced stage, even in this basic faith, right? So when uh, Prabhu mentioned that I travel uh, many countries, yes, and I'm pretty sure all of you travel, um, you know, at least once a year before this COVID time. How many of you have taken a flight and asked the pilot, give me your license, right? Nobody asked that, right? You don't ask the pilot, show me the license uh, uh, so that I have faith and confidence uh, that you will fly me safely from here to wherever it is. Um, all of us have gone to restaurants, uh, you know, if not recently, many, many years ago before we joined. Um, and, and, and you don't go and check the, you know, the food uh, to find out if there is any poison, whether the whether the kitchen has got any, um, you know, uh, hygienic problems or not, right? So these are all the inbuilt sort of faith, confidence that we have. When we are driving, we don't uh, uh, 
you know, uh, are not paranoid about the uh, opposite guy coming and hitting you, right? So, so otherwise we'll be a mental wreck, right? So you need to have that inbuilt uh, faith in everything in life. And so uh, devotional service, uh, devotional activity stra- starts off with this basic faith uh, in, in all aspects of God consciousness. The second aspect is we'll get to that. So you can, you can, if you have any any thoughts or uh, points to share or any questions, you can you can bring up. But uh, you know, hold back uh, for some time as we connect all these things together, and then it'll give you a better picture. Okay. So after we have that faith, oh yeah, I think uh, Krishna consciousness is good. Let me go and see what's going on. Um, then what we do is we associate with devotees. We may come by ourselves to the temple or somebody says, hey, I've been to the temple. I know somebody that let's go there. So we are all, man is said to be a social animal, right? So we can't live alone, right? So this is one of the good examples that was given by Kratu Maharaj, right? I'll never forget that it was very good, right? We talk about devotee association, devotee association, right? Even people who drink, right? They don't just, you know, drink by themselves in their house, right? Like 99% of the people, they, they, there's no fun in that. So they like to go to the bar and hang around with people, right? So man is a social animal. So as devotees, we need the association of devotees, right? So only after that basic faith has sprouted, then we will seek the company who are spiritually awakened souls, right? Who are much more advanced than us. And as we know, who we are is who we associate with, right? If we associate with a drug addict, we'll be a drug addict. If we associate, if our sons and daughters associate with the topper in the class, and they will also go from wherever they are to uh, the highest uh, rungs of uh, education in their life as well. Um, It is said that you are the average of five people you spend the most time with. Okay, So this is a general statement. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Okay, Somebody that you're associating with is higher than you here. You are here. They are here. Another person is here. Another person is here. So you take the average of the five people that you spend most time with. Right. So what will happen if we are here and all the five people are here? So gradually we are also uh, elevated to, uh, to that level. Right. So the people you spend the most time with they actually shape our life and they determine who we are, right? So uh, they determine the conversation, uh, you know, that we have, uh, uh, they, that determines or uh, dominates our attention. They affect to which attitudes and behavior you are really exposed to. Eventually you start to think like they think and behave like they behave. Everybody agrees uh, um, this these few statements? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay, so it's very important that we associate with the right people, right? So that that's why it is said. So I took this uh, uh, Darren Hardy, right? So according to the research by social psychiatrists, right, the people you habitually associate with determine as much as ninety five percent of your success or failure in your life. These are scientifically proved, right? So ninety five percent of the success or failure in our life is depending on who we associate with. Okay, constantly who we associate with, right? And 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 the dream in our heart may be bigger than the environment. So it's very important that we hang around with the right people, right? So we have to build our squad and surround ourselves with devotees that you admire. So associate with devotees who are more advanced than us. Okay. And 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 the best association for all of us is uh, Srila Prabhupada through his books, right? So when I travel, that's the best association I have. And I truly um, you know, are are indebted uh, uh, you know to have this opportunity to read so much when i'm on this 15 hour journey non-stop journey in a flight right and who's there to associate with is Prabhupada, right these fascinating books you don't even need to carry all these books this veda base is there and i think one mother was mentioning they always follow through ipad you have this veda base uh, you know uh, application the entire content of our brahma madhva gaudiya vaishnava sampradaya is there in ebooks or in, in apps like that, right? So you can do search, you can find anything that you want. So the most important part, which is the second stage is Sadhu Sangha, which is association with devotees. And I thought I will give you some general information as well. So the key is you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And it is said that 95% of our success or failure depends on who we associate with. So from our standpoint, associate with devotees, who are very inspiring 
in our life who can take us to the next realm of uh, Krishna consciousness. And the best of all associations in ISKCON is the association of AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada through his books. Okay. Any questions, thoughts, comments on this second stage? I mean, that's the best advantage or, or best uh, uh, thing that has happened in COVID that our association with, uh, with material people have reduced. Yeah. And, and the other way around is the association with the people like who would normally visit us uh, once in six months people, the great people like you, Prabhuji. <laughs> or oh, not me. Person. You know, you're absolutely right, right? Like, uh, because, uh, you know, for all these temples, as you can see, you know, every Sunday we have, uh, the distance is not a problem anymore, right? Uh, there is this Prabhu from Mauritius, uh, one Maharaj, actually, I'm looking at the board. Yeah, on 24th, there is a Maharaj from Mauritius who's going to give a class in one of the temples, right? And uh, coming Sunday, it's a devotee from San Diego, you know. Uh, you know, the temple environment, there is always a uh, restriction in cash flow and etc. Right. So you can't just uh, fly people from somewhere and ask them to give a class. Now, the best thing. So now devotees are saying, uh, you know, can we still have, uh, <laughs> you know, classes and uh, this type of seminars uh, uh, through through the Zoom, etc. Right. Virtual classes, even uh, post COVID, right? Because, and, and I think this is going to be the norm, right? People are used to it. You don't have to drive uh, um, in the, in the winter, you know, during times like this, you don't have to drive in, uh, uh, in the ice and snow. So the comfort of the home, uh, we are able to get all that. So thank you for sharing that. Prabhu. So again, uh, devotee association, as we progress, uh, who we are is who we associate with. And the best association is AC Bhakti Vinta Swami Srila Prabhupada through the books and his classes that he's given. The third, a rung or the third phase or the stage is bhajana kriya. This is following the regulative principles of sadhana. Now, I, I just brought this difference here. What is sadhya and what is sadhana, right? So sadhya means ultimate goal and sadhana is the process to achieve this ultimate goal. Okay, so prema is the sadhya, which is the ninth uh, stage of devotional service that you saw in the slides a few slides before. And this sadhana is the aspects or the process that takes us to this ultimate goal of our life. So that is chanting, hearing, nine forms of devotional uh, services uh, are, are, are all this uh, sadhana. Is that, is that clear? What is sadhana? Prabhu, so the difference between sadhya and sadhana. So sadhya, th these are important uh, words uh, we just need to remember all the time. So sadhya is, uh, you know, the me, uh, the... Uh, uh, the ultimate goal and sadhana is the process. Okay, so uh, and and bhajana kriya means learning and then doing it, right? So that means performing various devotional activities, uh, engaged in the service of the Lord, um, how to do the arati, how to perform egya, how to put uh, tilak, uh, and 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 how to quickly catch the wandering mind during the devotional service. It gets better and better as we go through the stages, but uh, in in a nutshell. Bhajana Kriya means following the regulative principles. Okay. Now, as we get advanced, even in this stage three, uh, Prabhu, maybe we can ask somebody to read this, right? The three bullet points, uh, pitfalls to watch out during Bhajana Kriya. So maybe if somebody didn't read, would you like uh, to read uh, the first bullet point? Fake scholarship, anybody? Fake scholarship. Fake scholarship. After engulfing a drop of transcendental knowledge at the first step in our spiritual journey, we become intoxicated by our sudden scholarship and march forward over confidentially. Expecting glorification, I am great kirtaniers. I put on the base dhoti better than others. I give better class, etc. Yeah, so this is this is what our acharyas, uh, you know, warn us, right? So be careful, uh, you know, as you are getting, you know, better according to you, watch out for this uh, fake scholarship, right? So because uh, we may be thinking somebody may say, oh, Prabhu, Mataji, you are doing great. We need to be careful that it doesn't uh, take us in the wrong direction. Is that okay? Yes. Right? Anybody can read the any Prabhu or mother. Maybe we can read from uh, we can hear from one of the mothers for the second point. 
-hmm. untenable decisions by interrupting some apparently contradictory statements. Let me leave my family, etc., and go to Vrindavan. So this has happened to some devotees as well, right? As we get to read more and more. Yeah, what am I doing here? Wasting my time. You know, I need to go to Vrindavan and settle there, uh, you know, leave everything and go, right? So these are untenable decisions by, you know, there could be some, because we read, yeah, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became a sannyasi, went there. You know, we follow in the footsteps, but we don't imitate, right? So those are important differences. We follow in the footsteps and then we don't imitate. Anukara and Anusara, right? So let's, uh, you know, in the beginning stages, we think that, oh, no, 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 I'm doing something wrong. Let me go here and walk away to Himalayas and do things, right? So that's the make, uh, that's untenable decisions by, inter by interpreting some apparently contradictory statements, right? And the third one, anyone else? Hmm. Inability to maintain self-invented vows. Declare extreme war on sensual pressures and temptations. By ridiculing sense objects, we feel powerful and victorious in the battle. But when we want to enjoy again, we abandon the fighting. We follow this one, right? So, you know, as we get, uh, 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 you know, better and better, we got to be careful of all these pitfalls, right? So we say, what is this, you know, full of Maya, you know, this uh, uh, sense pleasure and things like that. And then, and then we, 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 we need to understand we are in this Maya, right? So we, we, we have to be really, really careful, right? So when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to South India, uh, Krishna Dasa was his uh, servant, right? Can anybody have a better association than having with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? He's having a physical uh, you know, he's a physical servant, right? He's, he's, he's the close proximity of Lord Krishna, combined form of Lord Krishna and uh, Srimati Radharan, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And what happens? He goes to Kerala, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu goes to Kerala, and then there are these Bhattataris, and, uh, you know, the women of Bhattataris uh, took away uh, Krishna Das. And, and, and then when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, hey, why did you take my person? He was my servant. And then they took all the knife and they wanted to come and attack Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And of course, all the knives slipped out of their hands and then cut these Bhattataris. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu grabbed Krishna Dasa by the hair and he took away. So we got to be very careful. Don't Let's not be overconfident or saying uh, things uh, because we are uh, very fragile in this material world. So again, the message here is... Uh, don't try to, um, you know, be, uh, uh, you know, in the, in that uh, front foot saying, you know, this Maya is nothing and it's full of illusion. I am beyond that because, you know, we need to be uh, very cognizant of the fact that we are very vulnerable, right? So again, these are all the pitfalls that we need to, some of these pitfalls, there could be more, but these are all the pitfalls uh, that we need to watch out during this process of Bhajana Kriya. Any thoughts, questions? Okay, so the good news is, although the clouds and mist blanketing the heart evaporate fully upon reaching the destination, which is the pure love of Krishna, most of the weaknesses and doubts that we have gradually sheds along the way as if by themselves, right? As we perform more and more devotional service, automatically these uh, doubts and, uh, uh, you know, problems and weaknesses will go away by itself. So far, are we okay what we are uh, dealing? Because I want to make it very sort of simple in that sense, uh, because this can, this can be very technical as well, these nine stages. I, I, I try to put effort to make sure that uh, it's in the ground level so that all of us can follow this. Any, any questions, thoughts on what we covered so far? So we covered uh, faith in Krishna, which is Shraddha. Then Sadhu Sangha Association of Devotees. And we are in this third stage, which is Bhajana Kriya, following the regulative principles of sadhana. So sadhya means the ultimate goal and sadhana is the means or the processes to achieve this uh, ultimate goal. Okay, so are we okay so far, uh, mothers and Prabhus? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. okay, so... The next stage, which is the fourth stage, fourth out of ninth, uh, kindly bear with me. Again, you know, these are, these are important topics. Um, so just half an hour of your attention will be required and everything will wrap up things in a nice way so that you will understand it uh, better, okay? So, anartha nivriti, 
so this means stopping unwanted things so so far we have faith then we associate with devotees we follow the regulative principles and then once we start following the regulative principles then the bad habits that were there or the lower taste slowly start falling off right so i just put the difference between so artha means is the wealth and that's lord krishna and the devotional service and uh, uh, and every desire that is directed at something else is anartha so anartha means unnecessary or useless thing that's what it says so anartha means unnecessary things now somebody may ask prabhu what is aparad so aparad means it's offense okay so it's close enough sounds uh, you know so i just thought uh, we want to uh, make sure that we all uh, understand it so anartha means unwanted or useless things it could be uh, you know this gambling and intoxication and excessive material attachment all of us need some sort of material attachment right so we will have material attachment but excessive material attachment is a problem false ego hatred all those are said to be anarthas and what is said to be aparad is the offense against the lord so that's not what we are talking about in this fourth phase but still most of this page i just put some examples because some of you are uh, are very familiar with these uh, past times uh, i apologize for the spelling mistakes uh, of scriptures <laughs> so i apologize i may have uh, i i missed that uh, but again so aparad means offense anartha means unwanted things so in this fourth stage it is said that unwanted uh, things will automatically slowly start diminishing once we have faith in krishna uh, uh, the the uh, devotees uh, faith in the scriptures then we have association of devotees then we follow the regulative principles but aparad is very important and uh, we should avoid that um you know uh, some of the examples are uh, ramachandra puri offended uh, madhavendra puri who's madhavendra puri anybody god puri's spiritual master beautiful ishwara puri's spiritual master now the next question is who's ishwara puri chaitanya mahaprabhu spiritual master good ishwara puri and keshava bharati so ishwara puri is the one who initiated uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu he gave the mantra diksha and then keshava bharti is the one who gave the sanyasi initiation yeah. in katwa everybody is okay yeah. yes yes prabhu ji okay and uh, who are the other uh, god brothers of ishwara puri you know there are famous personalities like paramananda puri paramananda paramananda puri is also one of them uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu actually met paramananda puri as well. anyway we don't want to open too many doors here so madhavendra puri as prabhu exactly mentioned is um, you know there are a lot of puris lot of keshavas etc so uh, we just uh, need to recalibrate yes so madhavendra puri is the spiritual master of ishwara puri and uh, ishwara puri's god brother is ramachandra puri so he offended his own spiritual master if you remember right and then uh, indra insulted uh, uh, brihaspati and um, you know sarvabhouma patacharya's son was saying oh chaitanya mahaprabhu is eating a lot and gopala chapala was the one uh, who was envious of uh, yes i just wanted to confirm one thing Yes, Madhavendra Prabhu. Puri is the same personality as the Maharaj drama, Mr. Puri, right? I haven't seen Maharaj's drama. Probably it should be the same. Is the the yes. the Kishor Gopinath like yes. you know? Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's the Absolutely. same, right? Yes, Just, yes. Thank you. Yeah. And and we have to remember also Madhva Charya, right? This is Madhavendra yes. Puri and Madhva Charya. We are all coming from Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. Right, so Madhva Charya is the one. Uh, UDP is associated. You remember how that uh, beautiful deity came into play? As I said, we always open too many doors. We need to close and come back to this. But uh, uh, you know that beautiful. You know, once uh, when um, uh, Madhva Charya was uh, sitting, he's supposed to be an incarnation of Vayu, right? And then there was this huge storm, and there was a ship that was going from Dwaraka and came to towards UDP, and then it was supposed to drown with all the valuable things. So what did he do? He put his upper cloth in a, in in his staff, and he blew. It's Vayu, right? Incarnation of Vayu. When he blew that, all this uh, uh, you know, uh, powerful storm stopped. Um, captain actually was watching everything, and then he came and fell at his feet. And please take anything that you want from this. It's got unlimited wealth in there. He said, "I'm a sannyasi. I don't need anything." But anyway, it looks. So what do you have there? Oh, that's the Gopi Chandan. 
<laughs> oh, I use a lot of tilak. Can I get the Gopi Chandan? Then there was a huge ball of Gopi Chandan. He walked with that four, four miles, it is said. And then he put it in one of the kunds there. And then uh, Krishna was there in this beautiful uh, form, right? So we are all referred to, uh, you know, we're coming from this Brahma, Madhva, Gaudi, Vaishnava, Sampada. So that's Madhavendra Puri and then Madhva Acharya. Okay, so then we had Mother Sachi herself uh, offending Advaita Acharya, accusing him of taking the son away. Jagadan and the Pandit was, uh, um, you know, having this, uh, you know, a problem with uh, Sanatan Goswami and he even threatened to beat him up. Uh, Durva Samuni Ambarish Maharaj, that's a famous uh, pastor from the ninth, uh, uh, ninth uh, canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Daksha, fourth canto, you know, Daksha was so puffed up uh, against Lord Shiva, he was blaspheming him. And eventually what happened? He got his head cut off. Who's the person who cut off his head? Shiva sent somebody. Who's that person? Starts with V. Anybody? Veera. Very good. Veera Badra. Veera Badra. So he cut off his head and uh, a goat's head was attached. Right? Saubaramani offended uh, Garuda. Uh, Gopala Chakravarti offended Haridas Thakur and eventually nose fell off. Uh, they were, so lots and lots. Right. The last one was very important. Right. Anybody remembers this Rupa Goswami's laughter? Yes. Yes, Ruby. Okay, good. All of you remember this, right? Okay, so anartha nivriti means stopping all unwanted things. So as we um, have faith in Krishna, associate with devotees and follow the regulative principles, then the stopping of unwanted things take place and then it takes us into firmer faith. Any thoughts, questions? Yes, comments? Yes. Lovely, all the examples that you have given here are actually those examples where the devotees offended the other devotee while they are in person, while they are in front of them uh, physically. Mm -hmm. But now um, there, there are times when we have some bad feelings towards some other devotee, but we don't really take it out. We just keep it in our, our, our keep it in ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the second, the second scenario could be, that yes, uh, we don't say that in front of that devotee, but but we discuss that with other other devotees that these are the basically we we do uh, prajalpas. So um, what is the so does that also falls in 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 that kind of category or so it is said right uh, um, you know um, thoughts become word words become action right. So as you mentioned, sometimes, uh, yeah, all these were in physical proximity. Um, sometimes we think bad of others, right? So uh, thoughts becomes words and words become action in a nutshell, right? It goes through many other phases as well. So eventually what we think, and I think in the example that you mentioned, then, then that person talks to someone else, right? So thought becomes uh, words, right? In one way, not directly offending this person, but that is also an indirect offense, right? Because what we are doing is we're forming groups, right? We're forming some sort of, uh, um, you know, uh, more people to be in, in the same mindset to tell about that person, right? So it could be fully true, partially true, but then what we're doing is that person doesn't get an opportunity to defend himself at all, right? So it goes from one person to another person like wildfire, it becomes rumor. And you know the telephone game, right? What happens, we tell about somebody and then you know the telephone game, Prabhus? Have you played that in your work? You know, they tell about the importance of communication, right? So there was actually two, two balloons that burst, okay? They put two balloons and the two balloons burst, okay? So there were, um, you know, five people in different, different rooms, right? So the the same information was supposed to be told by this person to the other person in the other room that person will tell the other person you know eventually what what uh, went and reached it said uh, uh, there was a, a gunshot two two bullets were fired from two balloons that burst when it goes from one person to another person it gets exaggerated it gets uh, multiplied uh, added uh, more things uh, sometimes subtracted uh, in a wrong way so when we tell things to others and the others will add more and tell others, so the offense is getting more and more, right? So it's not getting smaller. So whether we tell this to the person in, uh, whether we do it as an action, you know, physically or verbally, or when we tell this to others, it just multiplies the, um, uh, the aparad that we are doing, right? So there are many different types of aparad. Um, and uh, this is one of the aparads, right? Uh, we also, the extension of this is pity party, right? Do you know what is pity party? No. 
pity party is oh this person did that to me is a nasty person is this guy and uh, you know we tell this to and then we get five people ten people pity party right so uh, that is also part of this um, aparad right so about uh, this person it could be true it, it it may not be true but it is still when we are um, broadcasting this to others who don't need to know then there is uh, th there is a uh, expansion of this anartha in a different uh, uh, angle Let's answer the question. Yes, Prabhuji. So that 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 term is also known as Chinese whisper. That oh, that, that. Uh, phone telephone uh, yeah. game, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So two two balloons or a balloon burst, and eventually it was like, yeah, bullets were fired and people were killed and things like that, right? So when it goes from one person to another person, uh, it multiplies, it transforms, etc. Okay, so the next, uh, the fifth stage is Nishta, which is the firm faith. And we'll spend some time on this. Prabhu, what time do we have? Are we okay with the time, Prabhu's mothers? How many more minutes uh, can we have? How many more? 15 minutes, 20 minutes, mother? Yes, Prabhuji, we are, we are doing good with the time. Okay, please, uh, please uh, let me know. Okay, so firm faith in Krishna, scriptures and devotional service from that initial spark of faith to firm faith in Krishna consciousness, right? So here it is said a stable level of Krishna consciousness is reached. So we no longer mull over the mundane adventures of our past or doze off while chanting the japa because we have faith. We know how big Krishna is, right? Now we say, oh, mind is wandering every time we chant which is true in human, it's human nature, conditional form of life, right? But then what is more important? Our mind goes towards that. You all agree? So when, 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 you're, when you're watching TV, for example, and uh, suddenly uh, uh, there is, um, um, you know, uh, you, you realize that there is exam tomorrow, right? So your mind shifts to that, right? Then this TV doesn't become that important anymore, right? So when we know Krishna or the devotional activities for Lord Krishna, when we are doing Arati, our mind cannot be on the cricket match that India is playing in Australia or anything like that, right? So what is important? So if we think that cricket match is more important than um, you know, the arati that we are doing, of course, our mind will be there. So our mind gravitates to things that we perceive as more important to us. Is that, is that fair statement? So, so, so here we perceive on this stage, when we have firm faith, we know how big, how, you know, uh, uh, powerful Krishna is, you know, as you, you would have heard again and again, right? Don't tell the uh, Krishna, how big the problem is, but tell the problem how big Krishna is, right? So when we have that faith in Krishna, um, then automatically, then this mundane adventures of the past, you know, some sometimes we feel like a hero about what we did, uh, either good or bad, many, many months ago, years ago, will come into our, uh, our mind. And dozing off sleep will not be the most important thing because we are talking about somebody who's more powerful uh, because we have that faith, right? So we are not lazy about the spiritual life. So that's the difference, key difference between initial faith, the spark of faith and this firm faith, right? So we are not lazy and we are not lazy because of the firm faith that we have in this whole structure of Krishna consciousness, right? So we know the value of our precious time on this earth and want to maximize the time that is left in front of us. We don't know how many minutes or hours or days or weeks are left before us, right? So I mean, COVID is striking everyone hard and uh, anytime anything can happen, right? So the result of firm faith is that we will have, we will know the precious time that we have. We will not be lazy about spiritual life. It's, it's not like one end of the spectrum to another end of the spectrum. If this is bad and this is great, we are slowly moving towards this aspect of it, right? So we know the value of time. We're not lazy. We're not, you know, uh, enjoying about the past that we have done and get our mind dragged on to that. So that's the difference between the initial spark and the firm faith in Krishna consciousness. Okay? So what is belief and faith? Did I did I discuss this with uh, your uh, Bhakti Vriksha group before, Mother, about faith? Did we talk about faith before? No, right? Uh, you did, Prabhuji, the last time. couple of uh, different slides, yeah. Okay, okay. 
Okay, so this is also so maybe I I did cover it. So maybe uh, we'll um, we'll maybe we'll we'll skip some of these slides and we'll keep it here. So these are worth in gold. Okay, so let's spend some time on this. So maybe Prabhu's and uh, Mother, we can take uh, turns to read this, please. This is we are talking about fame, faith. Please, anybody, just start reading. Krishna is moved by faith, not by your cries. Faith gets Krishna's attention. Mercy is activated when faith is stirred. Faith comes from hearing and hearing words of Krishna, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chaitamrita, etc. Not CNN, Fox News, etc. <laughs> faith. Faith faith works. Works. Okay, go ahead, Maharaji. Faith works both ways. Don't release faith in the wrong direction. Remember placebo and nocebo effect. So I just wanted to stop there, right? So all of you um, know the difference between placebo and nocebo? No, Prabhuji. Okay, so placebo effect is, um, um, let's say that um, there is, I, I, I have a sickness. And uh, I tried few things and nothing is happening. It's not going away. But I have so much of confidence in a particular doctor. And I have so much of confidence in the medicine that this doctor is going to prescribe. At that point in time, I go and he says, I put this shot for you, injection for you, vaccination. And your problem will absolutely go away. And even in that injection, there is no chemical. Even if he puts water or sugar and he gives me the injection, I will get cured. It's the psychosomatic impact that things has. It's because of our mind. Psychosoma, soma's body, psychosomatic. So the placebo effect is when we have confidence in something, that good thing will happen, it will happen. That is placebo effect, okay? The evil cousin of placebo is the nocebo. Oh, this doctor is, oh, I don't have uh, much confidence in this doctor. Oh, I think I'm going to get an allergy. This one I will get. You will get an allergy. Even if you're not supposed to get an allergy, you will get an allergy. So that's the placebo and the nocebo effect. Is that clear? Anybody propose? Did you hear me? Yes, Prabhuji, it's clear. Okay, yeah. so, so so if you don't have if you if you have faith in the wrong thing, then it'll happen. Oh, I think I'm going to um, you know my car. Uh, I think my car will uh, give me a problem. It's so too long that it didn't give a problem. It'll give a problem. Okay, go ahead. Faith is increased passively by scriptures and actively by devotees. Faith is testing God when we don't understand. When faith meets Krishna power, supernatural miracles happen. Faith is something you should believe in it for it to happen. When the scriptures state... Ah, we missed one. Faith is like... Okay, let me read it. Faith is like a muscle. When you stretch it, it grows. Okay, continue please. When the scriptures state, when you hear this pastime or if you do this, your sins will be expunged. It will if you have faith. Okay, That's how it will work. Otherwise, if you read that verse, uh, okay, this is the palashruti of this pastime at the end. If you hear this pastime with all your faith, uh, if you hear this pastime, then uh, uh, sins as tall as Mount Meru will go. Yeah, if you don't have faith, you're just reading that and you're going away. right? But if you have that faith, then it activates that. Okay, so when we when we go for this uh, Damodar month, you know, one of the verses from the Skanda Puran is that if you, uh, Neela Mother or anybody offers, um, you know, ghee lamp to Lord Damodar, 4237, if you offer it, even if our ancestors are in um, in a place uh, that is said to be what, Hechi uh, double hockey stick, right? What is Hechi double hockey stick? Hell, right? Even if our ancestors are there, then they will get liberated. Then obviously with that faith, when we do it, it they will be liberated because it is all penned down by Lord Krishna himself in the form of Vyasadeva, who is the 17th uh, incarnation of Lord Krishna. Okay, So that it's all written. That means it's guaranteed. Okay, So that's the difference between sort of the initial spark and then 
this firm faith, right? So this means that, yeah, so, um, you know, Lord Krishna's uh, mercy will be activated by the, uh, by, by the faith that we have, right? And trusting God, even when we don't understand, something may go wrong. Oh my God, why this is happening to me? I'm chanting. No, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. In this material world, we are in this boxing ring, we will get punched, right? But then eventually everything will fall in place, okay? So I'm going to skip through some of the slides uh, that I have here, which we may have covered uh, uh, to an extent. But what I wanted to show is, um, okay, so how do you activate or ignite or stir up the faith? Okay, so the seed of faith in heart is, is growing when the water, when it is watered by hearing and chanting. Okay, so that's the seed, right? So for a seed to grow, you pour water. So for this faith to grow, you, you want to do more of this hearing and chanting. And the spatula, you know, it's a spoon, right? When we are cooking, you use this uh, spoon, it's called. So a spatula, right? So the sta spatula to stir up the faith is devotee association, okay? And more importantly, very importantly, scriptures, right? Scriptures uh, are like GPS, right? It helps us to go to the final destination uh, wherever we are, right? And uh, GPS is supposed to be God's pathway to success. This is the very first GPS that is given to us, right? So from wherever we are, we can go. So if I'm coming to your place from Eastern or Northern part of uh, Ontario with a GPS, I can come. So with these scriptures, we can go to Goloka Vrindavan. Does not matter whether we are in Brampton, Toronto, whether we are uh, anywhere else, we can go home back to God. So that's the faith in the scriptures as well. Any questions, thoughts? We skipped uh, quite a few slides there, uh, but again, it, it's just uh, reverberating the importance of firm faith in uh, Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. Okay. Uh, Prabhuji, I just want one clarification. Yes. You told, uh, like the example you gave about Damodar Arti. Yes. And uh, of course, I didn't know that, you know, our ancestors and uh, all other people will be relieved by this, like, uh, you know, from the hellish life. So I never, I never, I, I mean, I didn't hear it so far. So first I was hearing, but uh, I was told by some of the devotees to light the ghee lamp and I did that. Mm -hmm. So of course I do it uh, every Damodar month, but uh, uh, like um, now I, I don't know. I mean, not that I don't have faith. I just didn't know, but still I was doing. Other effects are the same, like what all is. Uh, yeah, it's a good question. But I mean, we, we, we know what happened to Ajamil past him, right? Uh, in the sixth canto, right? So he didn't know that he was calling the names of the Lord and he called the name of the Lord and still the uh, impact was there. The impact was there in the sense that he had a second chance, right? So he went to Haridwar. He was not taken by this Yamaduta. He went, he went to Haridwar and then he performed devotional service and then the spiritual airplane Nanda and Sunanda came and they took him. He did not. Agyanada davagyanada uttama sloka nama yet sankitata magam pumso dahe dedo etanana. So whether we know or not, uh, you know, dry uh, fire burns dry grass to ashes, you know, and, and fire will burn whether the child touches or not, whether the child is knowing or not when you touch it. So even though we didn't know, some of us may not have known that when you offer the ghee lamp, because there are, you know, you have to read uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas, okay? So this Hari Bhakti Vilas, I think it's the 16th Vilasa. I may have the book that's the 16th Vilasa that has got 434 or 435 verses, all glorifying what we do in the month of Damodar, especially this ghee lamp when you offer. Unbelievable thing. So you have offered the ghee lamp, maybe without knowing, but just like Ajamel chanted, even though we, he knew who uh, who the who Lord was when he was a Brahmin before he offended his wife, uh, first wife and the parents, etc. But he still didn't know when we chanted. For all practical purpose, he didn't know, but he did it. Then there is impact. So similarly, you did this. Uh, there is there is all the impact that uh, you 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 will uh, you are supposed to get. You will get it, and it is said that it's little slower. That is why when we chant some verses, also when we chanted, the power is there. But when we chant with the meaning, then it is accelerated. Okay, so then the impact is much more, right? When we chant, when we chant is one thing. When we chant with uh, like a like a child crying for the mother, then that emotion, uh, emotional advantage is there. Then the impact is more. We talked about this placebo effect, right? When we have that confidence that this doctor, this medicine will cure it, it will cure it. When you know, then it speeds up the process. That's all it is. Does that answer your question? Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, no problem. So then we are getting into quickly going into uh, Ruchi. Okay, so this is the sixth uh, out of the ninth uh, stage. So I'm going to go a little faster again, as I say, please fasten your seatbelts and we'll go a little faster. Okay, so Ruchi means higher taste. Okay, so just like, uh, you know, somebody may like fried fruit, food, somebody may like spicy food and samosas and pav bhaji, they may have a preference, right? So that's, is, they've got a taste for one particular type of food, right? So just like we have different types of taste, similarly, this is one prong taste to please Lord Krishna propensity for Lord Krishna, increase the taste for Lord Krishna, okay? So uh, uh, that is Vasudeva Katha, right? More, uh, you know, eager to hear about Lord Krishna, read about Lord Krishna, etc. And more importantly, internalizing the message and not just from one year to another year, and we continuously, at this point in stage, we are continuously improving our devotional activities and expanding our devotional activities. Okay, so which means uh, uh, you, you you are reading uh, once a week uh, uh, Prabhupada's books. Maybe okay, I, I I got this taste. I want to read it every day. I you spend two three hours every day, right? So it's continuously improving the devotional activities. That's that is that is what our acharyas are explaining in this uh, sixth state, which is uh, 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 ruchi. Okay, so that's that's that. Any questions on that? Okay, so we'll quickly move along. Ashakti means it's deep attachment, right? So Prabhupada mentioned in the Western world, typically Ashakti, the deep attachment is towards one's pets. You know, oh, I love my dog, I love my cat, etc., etc., right? But but the actual uh, deep attachment is towards Lord Krishna, right? The gopis, how they were attached to Krishna, Nanda Maharaj, uh, how they were attached to Krishna, right? So, and, and very important here also, right, in this advanced stage, when our mind, when we're chanting or doing anything spiritual, our mind goes, you know, miles away, right? But then we catch the mind going very quickly, very fast. So that is what is said to be Ashakti. And uh, maybe I'm going to get uh, uh, one of the Prabhu maybe to read uh, this Narada Bhakti Sutra. It's very important. So we'll quickly read this if you don't mind. Sunil Prabhu, did we hear from you? We did maybe, right? So maybe anyone yes, else would like to read? Yes, Prabhu, we can do it. Yeah, go ahead, please. Although devotional service is one, it becomes manifested in 11 forms of attachment. Attachment to the to the Lord glories, qualities, to his beauty, to worshipping him, to remembering him, to serving him, to reciprocating with him as a friend, to caring for him as a parent, to dealing with him as a lover, to surrendering one whole self to him, to being absorbed in thought of him and to experiencing separation from him. This last is the supreme attachment. So we talk about deep attachment here, Ashakti, and uh, you know how we can get deeply attached to Krishna's form, qualities, pastimes, beauty, to his service, which is devotional service, surrendering to him, deep uh, attachment to surrendering to Lord Krishna, etc. Okay, that is Ashakti. And then Baba is the seed of love for Krishna. This is where the seed of love for Krishna grows. It is said, just like, uh, uh, you know, um, it's, it's also called as Rati, right? Uh, so one, so in this stage, I don't think so, um, you know, um, we, uh, I'm not here in this stage. Uh, maybe some of you are. So you're totally undisturbed in all circumstances, right? So you don't want to waste even one moment and you refer, uh, refuse worldliness and freed uh, totally from the pride and uh, confident about the grace of Krishna and then uh, drinking this nectar of holy names, etc. Right? So this is like almost the penultimate stage, right? Because this is one step before Prema. You've already got this initial faith with Shraddha, then Sadhu Sangha, then Bhajana Kriya, then Anartha Nivriti, then Nishta, then Ruchi, then Ashakti, and then you are in this Bhava platform, right? And, and uh, Krishna is very pleased with us in this stage. And just as a tree bears fruit at a suitable season, the devotee experiences the mercy of Krishna at the appropriate time. So the last phase or the stage is referred to as Prema, which is the deep ecstatic love for Krishna. So we may still, so even in this, in this phase, we may still face material adversity, right? So it, but any problem that we have in material life, it, it won't disrupt our service. Whatever we are chanting, we, we, our mind is fully engaged in what we are doing. Uh, it will increase our humility, enthusiasm, and any problem, use it as a set, stepping stone to go towards Krishna, right? Um, so those are all the deep stages of uh, Prema, which is the final stage. 
so this is the highest bliss that one can experience and and, and as i said uh, maybe we don't experience that now but uh, as we are in the right path right like just like you you go in a train the train if it's ultimately going to vancouver it will take you to vancouver right so we are in this train of iskon and with the proper devotee association and with faith and following the regulatory principles and slowly the unwanted the things anarth and everything fall off and then uh, we get this taste for chanting and hearing and internalizing them and deeper attachment to krishna takes place and then we get this bhava and then Uh, and it is said that even if we die, we continue the service. As we know, neha abhikrama nasosti pratyavayu na vidyate. Anything that we, um, you know, do and we finish twenty percent, we start off with twenty one percent. Okay, so we are going to conclude with this. We started at I guess eight o'clock, so we are there one and a half hours. I can we can go much longer, but I want to give respect to the time. Uh, but I just wanted to wrap this up with a nice little uh, match. The following. and i want all of you to participate just a little bit of summary of what we just covered will that be okay we'll wrap it up in 2 minutes yes prabhu okay so i always like to do this so that uh, we nicely uh, wrap this uh, so that uh, uh, we are able to remember this for a long period of time right so this is the summary which we covered before so faith in krishna and then gradually association with devotees following the regulatory principles stopping unwanted things firm faith taste and taste for hearing and chanting deep attachment ecstatic emotional state and pure love for krishna right so again this is the spiritual transition from the conditioned form of life to this ultimate uh, state and we already said that um, you know knowledge of the process helps us to identify any hindrances on the way and by recognizing the symptoms of the disease we know that for us to go from here to here the path needs to be cleared so let's remove all the unwanted activities and also they are not separate by themselves or independent but it is different intensities okay now these are the nine uh, stages of bhakti and uh, i have put a few things on the right hand side so mm. can you match the following so anybody again there is you know i'm not going to put anybody on the spot so we are going to collectively do this so can you match the left side to the right side so shraddha means what on the right hand side anybody uh, faith in krishna faith in krishna faith in krishna very good mm-hmm. okay sadhu sangha association with devotee very good bhajan kriya Louder, please. Following the regulatory principles. Following, yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay. Anartha Nivriti. Stopping unwanted things. Stopping, yeah. Stopping. Very good. Nishta. Form faith. Form faith. Form faith. Okay. Ruchi. Ruchi. Taste. Taste for hearing. Taste. Taste for hearing and chanting. And actually, not just hearing and chanting alone. You know, the whole devotional service. Uh, a taste for. uh krish uh, performing devotional activities as well aa shakti deep attachment deep, deep attachment yeah deep okay bhava seed of love seed of love now the toughest question is the last one right <laughs> <laughs> so prema is but the most important it becomes actually so easy you know it lines up nicely once we have all these eight things in place then the ninth is very obvious as the only choice that was left for us prema was pure love for krishna when we take care of all the eight the ninth falls in place very easily this divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shri prabhupada ki jai jai